Okay, uh, class, let's uh, do the last video. Here's where we left off uh, the previous video on topography. Uh, topography, I'm sorry. I tend to say typography, but it's a different class. Topography, uh, the way that the ground is, the levels that, that it has. And this shows uh, the, those contour lines, and it gives some explanation here. So this PowerPoint you should have, or this file you should have on, on Blackboard. So I want to refer back to it. So the elevation and the elevation, the contours, and then the intervals. Again, the closer they're together, the steeper, the farther apart, the um, less of steep do you have. Okay, maybe just to, if it still does not make too much sense, let me show you this. Oops, not that one. Uh, is it this one? No, this one. This one. Okay, this is in the book, on your book. So let me show you this. Can I zoom out? No. Okay, guess not. Um, if you see right here, this is a section. This is the the, uh, at the and th that's also in your book. You can see it in page. Um, let me see. Page thirty six and thirty seven. This right here is in thirty seven. On thirty six, you can see the whole site. But this is just a, it's a cut, and the way it does, it, they do a, a, a section cut through the um, through that uh, piece of land with the proposed building. And here you see the intervals. 100, 95, 90, 85, 80, so on and so forth. I just want you to get a visual of how it, how it's done in section. Like if you were to cut that and then see it from the side, this is what it is. So that's this are the elevations, right? Just like a graph. And you see them here, 100 all the way to 70. So 100 to 70. I guess 65 will be somewhere there. I guess towards the end. And uh, those lines project. And then this is a section, so it was cut, and then you just project lines down, and it gives you an idea of how the the, the level of the, of the ground is and the site. So in this case, it goes from 100, or actually the first, this uh, contour, it's a little, it's on, uh, uh, I guess a little, 100 is right here. So it shows it up to there, and it starts, it starts to go down. See right here? This is at, uh, what is it, 93 maybe? And then this one comes down at 95, somewhere there. So you can you project those lines down and it, it creates that on section view. So then the proposed building, it's right here. So that's why I said you need to know what's the condition of the property so you can design your uh, your building in regards to the property you have. So in this case, you're gonna cut through it to put so the foundations way over here. So if you were to draw this and you don't know the condition, then how are you gonna lay it out? Is the foundation gonna be straight? Was gonna, we're gonna put, put piles here to support it? It's gonna be at an angle, which of course not, right? But that's why you need to, you need to know the condition of the site or the the lot so you know how to how you're proposing to put your, your structure there or your building. And then from here, it's, it goes straight which is right here, and then it steeps down, and then it just goes gradually again. So this is like a section. If you were to cut this property and look look, look to it where these are pointing, this is how it looks like. So in other words, if you're here, let's say you're here walking towards the back, like that, just up on a property, you're here in the front walking to the back of the lot, you'll be walking down, and down, and then steeper, and then down. So just an idea again on contours. If you read the book, it's it's self-explanatory. Um, let me just uh, finish up so we can finish chapter two. Again, I'm not going to cover everything, but you can read it. Uh, typical information you're going to find in the in site plan. Well, you need to have your scale. Like all the drawings you have that you're going to be drawing or you're going to be seeing, they're going to have they have to be to scale. Okay, legal description on the property. Of the property we we already discussed that you're gonna find that also in your site plan uh, lot uh, lot of whatever whatever at subdivision whatever whatever and all that information that it's 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 that it's the ID of that property so the scale uh, that one is you need to know but right of course uh, the description of uh, or legal description property lines and bearings and dimensions this one we discussed it already the property lines and the bearings now dimensions 
those are going to be for where are you going to lay out your property. Uh, let me show you a plan here. This was used for some of the other classes. This is a site plan. And you have your property line right here. Right there you see that phantom line, which is a property line. And then these dimensions that we have here, we're going to tie them. These are dimensions. We discussed them last time. We need to tie them from the property to where the structure is to again to the property. In other words, we have to we have to let the contractor know where exactly I want where where exactly do I want the structure to be. If I don't put them, I need to put it there. He might put them ten feet more to the right or to the left, and then I'm going to have issues with the parking lot. So you need to give them dimension exactly. And in this case, this right here, this is a little bit darker, that dark line. That's the proposed building for this site plan. So we need to tell them where exactly the one they will need them. So we tie it to a dimension, put to the wall, the, the width of the building, again to the, to the property line. And then we also go, go up and down. So we know exactly horizontal, horizontally and vertically. So these are dimensions to know how uh, exactly we're gonna put it on a, on a horizontal line, on the horizontal axis or an X. And then up and down, we're going to go, again, tie it from the property. It's going to be, let me see, zoom in. This is going to be from the property. We're going to go 65-4 to, to this wall, which is the front wall of that property, of, the property, of that uh, structural building. I keep on saying property, I don't know why. But the building, so 65-4 to the building, and then the building itself is 49-4. And then from there, we're going to tie it back to the back. So from the end of it, 89.4 to the another to the property. So no, we're telling the contractor exactly where we want it. Now, why do we know? Why do we want to tell them that? One, because it's our design, and we know the spaces that we need. And two, so they 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 can bring the the if they need to bring dirt to pull it to pull it up, they know exactly where to put it. So imagine they you didn't tell them and they bring dirt because they need to pull up the elevation, uh, the ground elevation, um, and. Uh, they pour the dirt over here, they start working on it over here. And then you come back and say, no, 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 it was, it was not there, it was over here on this side. And then all the extra expense to move that dirt and, and put it on this side. So you have to let them know exactly where do you want your building to be in regards to your property. Okay, very common sense. Like I told you, use your common sense for these things. Um, okay, so we have our... Um, Property line, bear, uh, property line bearings, which we already discussed that, and dimensions, I just told you. North Arrow. North Arrow is very important. We need to, we need to uh, also show where North is. In this case, North is pointing that way. So North, it's over here, South, uh, East, and West. East over here, West over here. Now, why is that important? You need to, when you're designing, you need to put the, the well, this true type of north. And later on, I don't know if he's going to cover it again or not. But you have true north and you have plan north. True north shows exactly where north is. So in other words, this this might be plan north. But if true north, if north was over here, like towards uh, between uh, north and, um, and west, so this arrow sh would be pointing this way. And it would not be northwest. It would be north. So in other words, depends where north is on a true nor north is where it points. Now the plan north, it always shoots up, or I, I, I'm sorry, it not, doesn't always shoot up, but it's always straight. And those are for plan purposes. Okay? Uh, so you have true north and plan north. And again, the, I don't think the book covers much on that, or at least in this chapter. Uh, but you can do a search on that. True north and plan north. True north is uh, where north is exactly. So this could be like pointing to a side or an angle. And then plan north, it's always going to be straight up or down or left or right. And that's in regards to the plan itself, like which is going to be your north elevation, east elevation, so on and so forth, in regards to the plan, not the true north. Okay, so again, you have true north and you have plan north. Um, so again, what do you want to know where north and south is? Well, because you want to know where east and, and west is in regards to where the sun comes in, the sun kind of goes down. Uh, how, how are you going to lay out your your uh, spaces inside so that certain areas are not as hot in the afternoon and they're nice in the in the morning. So you might want to, for example, maybe a kitchen. You want to put it on the 
um, on the uh, what is it the east side. That way, in the afternoon, the sun is not coming in straight into the kitchen. Into the kitchen. Why? Usually, uh, you, after you come, you come home, you go and cook and do your preparations. You don't want that to be hot. So again, that again, you need to know where the property, the condition of property, and where's north, because that's going to affect your design. Okay. So uh, you're going to show uh, the the scale, the legal description, you north. And then you have again true north and plan north. Again, true north is in north with it's uh, pointing to where north is in reality, when in in, in 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 the coordinates. And plan north is just for the purpose of the plan. Okay, for labeling purposes. And again, if it's not clear, I don't think the, this chapter covers covers that. But you can do a search and do a little research on that. Uh, and then existing proposed roads. Uh, if they're existing, you mark them as existing, or you already put there like whatever road. This one doesn't have it. So it's uh, I don't know Altamira Road and South Twenty Third, whatever, and you you put them there. Okay, this one doesn't have it, but you need to put the streets uh, also there. Also, uh, some other information. Some other information you might wanna. Let me see. Oops. Well, that's not it. This one. Okay, existing proposed roads, driveways and patios and walkways. Where are your, where are your, your, um, how are you going to get people in and out of your building or your property? Okay, so um, uh, let's take, uh, uh, again, this one. So you have sidewalks here. So for the people that are walking outside, this is the street. You're going to provide sidewalks, ramps. Sidewalks to go into your building. So you have a sidewalk coming in here. Here's a ramp also for, for handicap for ADA and then the entry and this plan is somewhere here. So you're providing that sidewalk to walk in and out of your building and also a parking lot and a driveway to drive in and out of your, of your uh, site. So you need to provide that too and that's and you design that. Okay, so it's uh, uh, almost Proposed structures, driveways, patios, walkways, and parking areas, existing and proposed structures. If there's a building already there, you, you call it as uh, existing. And anything new, you're going to put proposed structure. So that's, that's the area where you're proposing of putting your your uh, your building or whatever you're designing. For example, in this one, you notice there's this proposed project, and then it gives square footage. Proposed future project, single family. So in other words, so we're going to work on this. Uh, and then after that, they're proposing that this area, they're going to have something else later on. Okay, so you include there, what is it that you want to put on that site? And then if there's if there's going to be like a part two or like a, uh, not part two, but like a phase two of a project or phase three, you might want to put it there too so that they already know exactly where things are going to be. All right. I'm going to go a little bit faster because I'm, I think I spent too much, too much time on this. Public water, uh, the supply, how the water is going to come in, and how you're gonna, how the sewer, sewer is going to get out. Okay, so how everything's going to come in, and and in leave you. same thing with the uh, all the utilities. And then you, of course utility locations. So where are they? Where is the sewer going? How you're going to connect to the sewer? How, where is the water lines? And how you're going to bring water into your into your structure? And same thing with with electricity and all those things you show on your site. And again. For that, you need to know the condition of the site or the, the lot. Uh, we cover topography, setbacks. Setbacks are very important. Setbacks are these right here. Uh, I'll show you this one. It's a little bit easier to, to, to see. All property is going to have setbacks in the front and in the sides. Okay, now these are, these are you're going to get them from the city or from the county, wherever you're going to be working or wherever it's in charge of that property. And they have already setbacks set. Uh, that you have to respect. So in other words, you cannot draw or put your structure outside of that uh, area. And usually if they, for example, this one, on the setbacks for this one, it was 40 in the front, 10 on the sides, and 10 on the back. So what does that mean? That from your property, you go in 10 feet, you go in 10 feet, you go in 10 feet, and then from the property in the, in the front, you go in 40 feet. So that means that the, actually the area you have to put, a, to, to put structures on it's inside this hidden line right here, which are your setbacks. 
You cannot put nothing outside of that. Even though it's still your property, you cannot. Okay? So as long as you respect that, you'll be fine. You can put it anywhere here. As long as you respect, and of course, it depends on the design you're doing. But you can put it inside here, inside inside the setbacks, anywhere there. You're respecting the setbacks. Now, where they're for, in the front, more than likely, there's utilities going through here. So they don't want any structure on top of that front setback because they have lines going in water lines, electrical lines, or uh, uh, sewage. If something breaks, then to get uh, to reopen just by breaking concrete or, or asphalt, that's easy, and they will patch it again. But imagine there was a building right on top. I mean, that's uh, there'll be a lot of legal issues there. So that's why you have to respect those setbacks. Okay, that's one. Two, setbacks on the side, you want to, for example, this, this is a property line. Let's say over here on this side, there's another store or whatever might be on this side. So that means that the other property, they have to have a setback of 10 feet and then they can build, right? So in other words, there's a 20, in this case, 20 foot uh, space that should be free of structures. Okay, in other words, again, uh, let me put it on this side so it will be easier. Let's say here's a property line and then there's another building on this side. From that property they have to go 10 feet in free for a setback and then they can put their their building so imagine it's right here the other building right next to it so in other words there's well this this person didn't put they didn't put the property right on the setback you could if you want to as long as again you don't go over but in other words if this was right on the on the setback and this one this property wasn't around right the setback that means that there's in reality 20 feet from wall of, the, of this building to wall of this building if this was here so that gives you 20 feet now why why do you want to have that space there in case of emergencies right that's one of the reasons in case of emergencies they have to go in there there there's enough space let's say there's a fire there's a building here and there's another building over here they need to get to it well they can go through that side now if it's a house usually the houses are like, they're like uh, six feet uh, setbacks on the sides or seven and again, that's again, if there's a fire in the back, there's an emergency, the ambulance, they can just go to the back or they're changing someone, they can uh, um, have access to the back. So there's, in other words, there's not gonna be a, a, a structure right on it that they cannot go in there. So imagine if this was right on the, like two feet from the property and then the other house two feet from the property or a foot. And so it's like three feet or two feet uh, between wall and wall. If there's a fire here in the back, it will be hard for the firefighters to get to it and, 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 and take care of it. So there will be that's another reason why you have those setbacks on the sites. Okay, and again, do a little more research on setbacks. Very important. We can discuss them in class if you have a, uh, a question. And more than likely, I will cover it again just to uh, clarify some stuff. Those are set setbacks. Uh, specific items, adjustment property that might be required. Uh, you're gonna put some a swimming pool. You're gonna put some other stuff there. Uh, you, you're gonna have to draw them too. And then if you're gonna take uh, uh, where the trees are gonna be, some landscaping. If you're doing commercial, where your trees are gonna be at, because they're gonna it, it by code you're gonna have to have certain trees or certain green area uh, in, in 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 proportion to the size of the structure you're working on. So they may ask you 10 percent should be green area. So you need to provide an area for grass, for plants, and then uh, depends also on the area, on the, on the size of the building. Uh, you can They're going to require you need, you need five trees, you need six trees, so you need to put those there. And they have to be spaced because, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a code that you have to follow. And again, mostly on commercial uh, pr projects. So you need to put those two, okay? Or if there's some trees there that you have to get rid of, you're going to put them there. You have to put it there too that they're going to be removed for example let me show you no uh, where is it this one here notice here the these are trees trees are in uh, solid line and then this one here it's in hidden line uh, that's hidden that's hidden that's hidden that's hidden so in reality what they're saying is that in this uh, land that we have we're proposing to do this house and later on this one but what we need to do is I'm gonna leave they're saying we're gonna leave those trees, right? And if you go to the property, you'll see those trees. And they're saying this one that is hidden, and we need to get rid of it. Uh, this one, this tree, might as well get rid of it. I mean, 
might as well. This one, because we're gonna, it's, it's later on. We're gonna do this this house, so we need to get rid of that one. Get rid of that, rid of that one. Get rid of that one. That one. Get rid of that one too. And I don't know if that's a tree or something. So, oh yeah, it is. So get rid of that one. So in other words, you have to put there. If there's trees, which is you're gonna keep, which is you're gonna remove, to provide the space that you need for your structure. And again, those things, you have to put them on your, on your uh, site plan. Okay. And then here, it's just some some samples, and I'll finish it here. Uh, like uh, your water lines, how are they going to connect? If you have sewer, um, where's your clean out? And again, this has to, everything has, has has to match the plumbing plan. You can have have it that the clean outs at the back, and then the, your and then on your site plan, you're going to put the clean clean out. It's in the front. It's same house, same structure, same building. Everything has to match. Okay. And uh, that you can read on, and and when you this right here. I don't want to go over it because uh, on your civil class they're gonna go in depth on that. So you just read on that for for the purposes of this chapter. Okay. So I'll stop it right there again. Uh, plans, uh, site plans, basically is where my where's my property, what's the condition of my property, how to know the condition. Well, uh, I can get a topographical uh, plan, so I so I can see the condition, any trees, anything I have to remove. Do I have to bring in dirt or take away dirt? Once you have it the way you want it, then you have to know where north is. Why? Because I need to design with that in mind. I don't want to put my design has to, you know, it's a real, it's a building. It's not just uh, lines on a sheet of paper. It's a building you're designing, so you have to take into account the sun, uh, the traffic, the the not traffic, the the flow of the air. Uh, so you need to plan around that. So you need to know where north is, and that's a north arrow. Also, you need to know where your your the size of your property, and this are going to be your bearings of the 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 direction, which is the angle, and then your um, the length of that property line, which it will be given also on the bearing, and then also after that, you need to know where are the setbacks. So I know my property where my property lines. I know where they're at. Oh, and again, make sure you you remember the uh, point of beginning. Those uh, rods that are in the property, you need to know those too exactly where they are, so because you're going to tie it from there. To do your property lines once you have your property lines you have to find out about the setbacks front back and sides and you need to draw those okay you need to draw those setbacks so you know exactly the area that you have to lay out your building again you don't have to put the building right on the setback you could but you don't have to you you only tell, telling the city or, or the or the county whoever you or whoever's in charge that you're respecting those setbacks and you can put it wherever you want and again you're the designer you should know or you will know where to put it and then once you have your lay it out where you want it you have to you have to put dimensions to tell the contractor exactly where you want it and then you have to provide all the uh, uh, you have to put proposed and for example this one it's here uh, finished floor to be two feet above straight curve so the street the street already exists this is the curve so what you're telling is that from the top of this curve, this finished floor, or, or yeah, the, the, the finished floor here has to be two feet above this one. Okay, so you put all those notes there. Um, and then, of course, you have to tie it. You tell them exactly where you want it with the dimensions. And so you tie it from the property line to the building, to the building, to the property. Same thing over here. From the property line to the building, to the building, to the property, so they know exactly where it's at. And then how are you going to get your flow in and out of your building uh, with sidewalks and also parking and driveways. Okay, and then this one doesn't have it, but here you're going to put, you can put here if you have trees, if they require trees, where are you going to put them? Uh, detention ponds, if more in commercial buildings are going to ask for detention ponds, which is just a little pond that you have to provide. And I'm sure you have seen them. Just go to any commercial area and you'll see those ponds. And basically what it is is that when it rains, all the water that collects in the parking lot or coming from the building, it has to go to that pond before it goes to the street. Okay, because if imagine if none of them had detention ponds and it rains, all that water is going to go straight to the street. It's going to flood it. So in any commercial building, you have to provide a detention pond so when it rains, the water is collected there. Okay, and just go to any... any, any uh, any commercial, any stores, and usually towards the back or in the front, you're gonna notice that there's areas 
where it's a pond and usually they're fenced in and that's just when it rains all the water is going to collect there and you show that also on your on your or you pr not sh not do the detailing but just show where the detention pond will be saying that you're you're providing that or you're providing an area for it for it okay so more or less that's uh, what we will find on, on on a site plan any questions let me know we'll get, we discuss a little bit in class because i already did these videos and uh we'll jump to chapter three uh, after this